Okay, Jesse, your box has arrived, so let's go ahead and get you unpacked. Have a look. Okay, so we got two packages here. Let's start with this one. All right, very nice. 6105, and on this side. Good. Okay. A nice pair of watches for sure. Two of the two of the best from Seiko in this era. Okay, so let's uh, let's start checking these out. All right. Um, Pogue first. All right. So this is a. 71, 6139, 6005. This is a true Pogue. Resist textile with 17 joule in the Sua. A very nice, very clean example. I like it. You got a good crystal here. Um, a very, very nice dial. Uh, just, um, you've got this sort of classic fading around your. Um, your sub here. Hands look good. A little bit of imperfections on the on the sub hand. Sweep hand looks right. Everybody's at zero. Got a little bit of discoloration there. I only point these out just to be sure that we both see the same things together. Um, your inner turning ring has some fading, some inconsistencies in the color, but case itself is sharp as a razor really nice inner ring turns just as it should Let's, uh, send everybody around this is a 6005 so probably English Spanish designation hands are a little hazy but we might be able to clean those up a little bit very cool uh, that's working just fine Okay, so looks like a running, well, haven't seen it's running yet. <laughs> now it's running, a running 6105. I'm going to take your case back off just to have a, just to have a look at what's under there. Um, let's see if I can get it off just with a little bit of Rotoco here. Sometimes you get lucky, yeah, like today. Okay, got some service marks, looks like a, some scribbles. Not quite sure what they mean. Perhaps there's a. Yeah, I have no idea what any of this actually deciphers to, but somebody's been in there a couple times. Very clean movement. Movement really, really shines, which is nice to see. Very consistent. There's a 6139A movement, which is a 17 joule. Um, it's got a slightly different uh, configuration with the uh, the way that the minute recording uh, or hand turns around and some little differences. Plates are a little bit different, so it is a 
is an early one um, and has the right right movement for this watch. All right, let's um, let's look at performance. Let's see as it stands how it's doing. Just look under your capsule here as a way to kind of determine whether or not there is any lubrication in the movement whatsoever. Balance is working pretty hard, so that's good. Let's have, let's have a look. Let me take a close look. Yeah, I don't know. You got, you got lube under there. It's, uh, it's lubricated, so... We may see some good numbers here. This watch may not need much. I don't know what you've been noticing about how it's running, but it seems to me that it's it's been serviced. So we're gonna look. Huh. Okay. Give me one. Okay. So like I was saying, I I, I believe this to be a recently serviced watch. Um, it's a bit out of adjustment, but that's just a regulation uh, thing. We can we can bring that rate up with a a push of a you know of a screwdriver. I mean, honestly, you know the the numbers are good. They're not you know they're kind of wobbling around just a little bit. Um, you know, but somewhere between two twenty and two forty is a watch that's that's you know been serviced. Um, it's clean. It's good. I, I like it. Uh, I would wear this watch. I, I honestly, you know, uh, I'm not here to take anybody's money for things they don't need. Um, so if you're if you're happy with the way it's running, I can always regulate it and uh, send it back. So that's sort of what I was kind of suggesting was that maybe you can wear this one for a little while, um, put some miles on it, put some hours on it. Um, if it if it starts to act up and do something funny, uh, then then pro perhaps think about it. Um, as a service but honestly it doesn't look too bad uh, it's pretty consistent in the timing and uh, the amplitude's decent you know um, it's up to you so it's your call okay I'll be back okay so that was the Pogue let's have a look at the Willard another iconic Seiko watch uh, from this era let me, let me just get your crystal cleaned up just a little bit so I can see exactly what it looks like Oh yeah, that's clean. You got some nice watches here. These are beautiful. Excellent case, excellent insert, excellent dial, excellent hands. <laughs> this is a August 75, 6105 8110. And uh, if it looks half as good on the inside as it does the outside, we're in, we're in really good shape. Um, no real Mars or marks or anything to report. Um, looks it looks very original. It's got a um, what is a I think a Type Three crystal, so it's got a fairly low profile crystal. You got a little bit of an imperfection here on your twenty. Yeah, you know, some little divots here and there, and some crinkling. Uh, Otherwise, you know, a really nice watch. This thing's in good shape. Um, bezel clicks. That's nice to see. Um, these always need a crown um, rebuild, no matter what. They need a crown rebuild. I, um, you know, let's see if we can get it open. There we go. Boy, these are behaving. All right. So, ooh, there we go. Look at that. Uh, eight to eighteen to seventeen. So maybe it was serviced in twenty seventeen. I don't know. All right. Well, this is um, a nice looking movement. We got some older, flatter crystal in here. So perhaps this one will need a bit of a servicing. Uh, we are never quite clear until we really get a sense of what the numbers are doing. And you got somewhere in your barrel arbor, for sure. There's movement here, you can watch that wiggle. 
that's not what that's supposed to do. Okay, um, hairspring, first glance looks okay. This is a straight edge 6105B, which is the later style. Oops, I'm sorry. Probably not in the frame for a lot of that. I'll show you what your, what your barrel looks like. See this head right here where I'm pointing? That should not move quite as much as it does. You can really see it there. All right, let's um, power up a little bit. This one has seen a little bit of moisture, not a ton. I mean, it certainly hasn't affected the quality of the dial and hands. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just look again under your cap jewel here. Eh, it's got a big hair. And not much lubrication. Let's get that big hair out of there. Okay. Goodness. Okay, that's not a great place to have a hair. <laughs> Says the guy without any. All right, so let's um, let's put on the time grapher and uh, see where we are. <laughs> All right, so I think we have another judgment call. Watch, um, you know, it's a, it's a tough one. I don't know. I mean, it's um, it's pretty darn good. This is a nice watch. Um, I I want to go back and look at our interaction over email just to see what you had um, thought about these in terms of their, um, you know, their status. I don't know. I mean. Maybe you just wear it. This, you know, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what you want to do. To me, this is a watch where if if it were my watch and it had numbers like this and it was that smooth and even and you know, losing a couple seconds a day maybe, at a 220 to 230 amplitude, I wouldn't be so upset. Um, you know, it's got a little variation in the rate, and that's okay. I mean, these all. These these six one oh five you know movements are seventeen jewel movement. They got bushings in the center wheel. They're not fully jeweled. They're they're a good watch, but they they you know it's it's this is good this is good number territory for a watch like this. Um, yes, you may need some arbor port jeweling at some point. Um, is it going to get worse? Yeah, maybe. Is it terrible? No. Um, I don't know. I think you got good watches here. I, I, I think you wear them. All right, let's come back to the bench. Okay. Well, I think you have two watches that any Seiko collector would, um, you know, give their, give their eye teeth to uh, to own. These are beautiful examples of two of the most iconic uh, of the of the Seiko line. Um, they're the ones that everybody wants. Um, and I have to be really honest. I don't think they're that bad. They are doing pretty good. Could they get better? Sure, you know, service is service. You always are better right after service. But I feel like these are are okay. They're not bad. Um, you got a. I just realized you have one little cosmetic thing here on this one. The uh, the minute hand, or the hour hand has a little buckle in the center, but otherwise it's okay. I just want to point that out as we move forward. Um, I don't know. You got good crystals. You got good cases. You got good movements. They're beautiful. I would wear them. Honestly, I don't. They call me in, you know, three or four years if they start to get funky. Um, if you ever see any moisture, you know, inside, uh, stop wearing it and e immediately bring it to my house. I think we we're even close enough to you could drop it off. Um, but still, I would. I would just wear them. Honestly, this this is a great a great pair of watches to to just enjoy. Um, they've been serviced. They have they have lubrication in them. Um, they don't run this well without it. So I, I'll go back and look at what we talked about, um, but I'll let you decide. Do you want to spend the money now or do you want to just enjoy the watches? It's up to you. Okay, well, I, I don't want to push away business, but I don't want to also work on watches that don't need work. So uh, I think it's just a matter of your judgment on what to do about that. Okay, uh, let me know, and thanks for watching.